Today I'm going to read you the story of SEO Trot by Roald Dahl. These are our characters. Mr Hoppy, Alfie, Mrs Silver, the pet ship shop owner and the tortoise catcher. Mr Hoppy lived in a small flat, high up in a tall concrete building. He lived alone. He had always been a lonely man and now that he was retired from work, he was more lonely than ever. There were two loves in Mr Hoppy's life. One was the flowers he grew on his balcony. They grew in pots and tubs and baskets and in summer the little balcony became a riot of colour. Mr Hoppy's second love was a secret he kept entirely to himself. The balcony, balcony immediately below Mr Hoppy's jutted out a good bit further from the building than his own. So Mr Hoppy always had a fine view of what was going on down there. This balcony belonged to an attractive middle-aged lady called Mrs Silver. Mrs Silver was a widow who also lived alone. And although she didn't know it, it was she who was the object of Mr Hoppy's secret love. He had loved her from his balcony for many years. But he was a very shy man and he had never been able to bring himself to give her even the smallest hint of his love. Every morning, Mr Hoppy and Mrs Silver exchanged polite conversation, the one looking down from above, the other looking up. But that was as far as it ever went. The distance between their balconies might not have been more than a few yards, but to Mr Hoppy, it seemed like a million miles. He longed to invite Mrs Silver up for a cup of tea and a biscuit. But every time he was about to form the words on his lips, his courage failed him. As I said, he was a very, very shy man. Oh, if only he kept telling himself, if only he could do something tremendous like saving her life or rescuing her from a gut gang of armed thugs. If only he could perform some great feat that would make him a hero in her eyes. If only. The trouble with Mrs Silver was that she gave all her love to somebody else and that somebody was a small tortoise called Alfie. Every day when Mr Hoppy looked over his balcony and saw Mrs Silver whispering endearments to Alfie and stroking his shell. He felt absurdly jealous. He wouldn't even have minded becoming a tortoise himself if it meant Mrs Silver stroking his shell each morning and whispering endearments to him. Alfie had been with Mrs Silver for years and he lived on her balcony summer and winter. Planks had been placed around the sides of the balcony so that Alfie could walk about without toppling over the edge. And in, all, in one corner there was a little house in which Alfie would crawl every night to keep warm. When the colder weather came along in November, Mrs Silver would fill Alfie's house with dry hay. And the tortoise would crawl in there and bury himself deep under the hay and go to sleep for months on end without food or water. This is called hibernating. In early spring, when Alfie felt the warmer weather through his shell, he would wake up and crawl very slowly out of his house onto the balcony. And Mrs Silver would clap her hands with joy and cry out, Welcome back, my darling one! Oh, how I have missed you. It was at times like these that Mr Hoppy wished more than ever that he could change places with Alfie and become a tortoise. 
Now we come to a certain bright morning in May when something happened that changed and indeed electrified Mr Hoppy's life. He was leaning over his balcony rail watching Mrs Silver serving Alfie his breakfast. Here's the heart of the lettuce for you, my lovely, she was saying. And here's a slice of fresh tomato and a piece of crispy celery. Good morning, Miss, Mrs Silver, Mr Hoppy said. Alfie's looking well this morning. Isn't he gorgeous, Mrs Silver said, looking up and be beaming at him. Absolutely gorgeous, Mr Hoppy said, not meaning it. And now, as he looked down at Mrs Silver's smiling face, gazing up into his own, he thought for the thousandth time how pretty she was, how sweet and gentle and full of kindness, and his heart ached with love. I do so wish he would grow a little faster, Mrs Silver was saying. Every spring when he wakes up from his winter sleep, I weigh him on the kitchen scales. And do you know that in all the 11 years I've had him, he's not gained more than three ounces. That's almost nothing. What does he weigh now? Mr Hoppy asked her. Just 13 ounces, Mrs Silver answered. About as much as a grapefruit. Yes, well, tortoises are very slow growers, Mr Hoppy said solemnly. But they can live for a hundred years. I know that, Mrs Silver said, but I do so wish he would grow just a little bit bigger. He's such a tiny wee fellow. He seems just fine as he is, Mr Hoppy said. No, he's not just fine. Mrs Silver cried. Try to think how miserable it must be to make him feel to be so titchy. Everyone wants to grow up. You really would love him to grow bigger, wouldn't you? Mr Hoppy said. And even as he said it, in his mind suddenly went click. And an amazing idea came rushing into his head. Of course I would, Mrs Silver cried. I'd give anything to make it happen. Why, I've seen pictures of giant tortoises that are so huge, people can ride on their backs. If Alfie were to see those, he'd turn green with envy. Mr Hoppy's mind was spinning like a flywheel. Here, surely, was his big chance. Grab it, he told himself. Grab it, quick! Mrs Silver he said. I do actually happen to know how to make tortoises grow faster, if that's really what you want. You do? she cried. Oh, please tell me. Am I feeding him the wrong things? I worked in North America once, Mr Hoppy said. That's where all these tortoises in England come from. And a, and a Bedodian tribesman told me the secret. Tell me, cried Mrs Silver. I beg you to tell me, Mr Hoppy. I'll be your slave for life. When he heard the words, your slave for life, a little shiver of excitement swept through Mr Hoppy. Wait there, he said. I'll have to go in and write something down for you. In a couple of minutes, Mr Hoppy was back on the balcony with a sheet of paper in his hand. I'm going to lower it to you on a bit of string, he said, or it might blow away. Here it comes. Mrs Silver caught the paper and held it up in front of her. This is what she read. SEO trot, SEO trot, teg, reg, ib, reg, ib, emoc, no, SEO trot. Wog, poo, foop, poo, tush, poo. Gnippers, poo, wallop, poo.
Lipsbüb, ich bock, ich sück, wüb, plück, tüpp, nö, te, SEO trot, tüpp, nö, ta, tek, nö, tek, nö, egel, blub, düf. What does it mean? she asked. Is it another language? It's tortoise language, Mr. Hoppy said. Tortoises are backward creatures. Therefore, they can only understand words that are written backwards. That's obvious, isn't it? I suppose so, Mrs. Silver said, bewildered. Essio trot is simply tortoise spelled backwards, Mr. Hoppy said. Look at it. So it is, Mrs. Silver said. The other words are spelled backwards too, Mr. Hoppy said. If you turn them round into human language, they simply say, Tortoise, tortoise, get bigger, bigger. Come on, tortoise. Grow up, puff up, shoot up, spring up, blow up, swell up. Gorge, guzzle, stuff, gulp. Put on fat, tortoise, put on fat. Get on, get on, gobble food. Mrs. Silver examined the magic words on the paper more closely. I guess you're right, she said. How clever. Bet there's an awful lot of poos in it. Are they something special? Poo is a very strong word in any language, Mr. Hoppy said, especially with tortoises. Now, what you have to do, Mrs. Silver, is hold Alfie up to your face and whisper these words to him three times a day, morning, noon and night. Let me hear you practice them. Very slowly and stumbling a little over the strange words, Mrs. Silver read the whole message out loud in tortoise language. Not bad, Mr. Hoppy said, but try to get a little more expression into it when you say it to Alfie. If you do it properly... I'll bet you anything you like that in a few months' time he'll be twice as big as he is now. I'll try it, Mrs Silver said. I'll try anything, of course I will. But I can't believe it'll work. You wait and see, Mr Hoppy said, smiling at her. Back in his flat, Mr Hoppy was simply quivering all over with excitement. You're slave for life, he kept repeating to himself. What bliss! to be done before that happened. The only furniture in Mr Hoppy's small living room was a table and two chairs. These he moved into his bedroom. Then he went out and bought a sheet of thick canvas and spread it over the entire living room floor to protect his carpet. Next he got out the telephone book and wrote down the address of every pet shop in the city. There were 14 of them altogether. him two days to visit each pet shop and choose his tortoises. He wanted a great many, at least 100, perhaps more, and he had to choose them very carefully. To you and me, there is not much difference between one tortoise and another. They differ only in size and in the colour of their shells. Alfie had a darkish shell, so Mr Hoppy chose only the darker shell tortoises for his great collection. Size, of course, was everything. Mr Hoppy chose all sorts of different sizes, some weighing only slightly more than Alfie's 18 ounces, others a great deal more. But he didn't want any that weighed less. Feed them cabbage leaves, the pet shop owner told him. That's all they'll need, and a bowl of water. finished, Mr Hoppy, in his enthusiasm, had bought no less than 140 tortoises and he carried them home in baskets 10 or 15 at a time. He had to make a lot of trips and he was quite exhausted at the end of it, but it was worth it. Boy, was it worth it! And what an amazing sight his living room was when the, they were all in there together.
The floor was swarming with tortoises of different sizes, some walking slowly about and exploring, some munching cabbage leaves, some drinking water from a big shallow dish. They made just the faintest rustling sound as they moved over the canvas sheet, but that was all. Mr Hoppy had to pick his way carefully on his toes between the sea of the moving sea of brown shells whenever he walked across the room. But enough of that. He must get on with the job. Before he retired, Mr Hoppy had been a mechanic in a bus garage. And now he went back to his old place of work and asked his mates if he might use his old bench for an hour or two. What he had to do now was to make something that would reach down from his own balcony to Mrs Silver's balcony and pick up a tortoise. This was not difficult for a mechanic like Mr Hoppy. First, he made two metal claws of, or fingers and attached, he attached to the end of a long metal tube. He ran two stiff wires down the tube and connected them to the metal claws in such a way that when you pulled the wires, the claws closed, and when you pushed them, the claws opened. The wires were joined to a handle at the other end of the tube. It was all very simple. Mr Hoppy was ready to begin. Mrs Silver had a part-time job. She worked from noon until five o'clock every weekday afternoon in a shop that sold newspapers and sweets. That made things a little easier for Mr Toppy. So on that first exciting afternoon after he'd made sure that Mrs Silver had gone to work, Mr Hoppy went out onto his balcony, armed with his long metal pole. He called this his tortoise catcher. He leaned over the balcony railings, lowered the pole down onto Mrs Silver's balcony below. Alfie was basking in the pale sunlight over to one side. Hello Alfie, Mr Hoppy said. You are about to go for a little ride. He wiggled the tortoise catcher till it was right above the healthy. He pushed the hand lever so that the claws opened wide. Then he lowered the two claws neatly over Alfie's shell and pulled the lever. The claws closed tightly over the shell like two fingers of a hand. He hauled Alfie up onto his balcony. It was easy. Hoppy weighed Alfie on his own kitchen scales just to make sure that Mrs Silver's figure of 13 ounces was correct. It was. Now, holding Alfie in one hand, he picked his way carefully through his huge collection of tortoises to find one that first of all had the same colour shell as Alfie and secondly weighed exactly two ounces more. Two ounces is not much. It is less than a smallish hen's egg weighs. But you see, the important thing in Mr Hoppy's plan was to make sure that the new tortoise was bigger than Alfie, but only a tiny bit bigger. The difference had to be so small that Mrs Silver wouldn't notice. From his vast collection, it was not difficult for Mr Hoppy to find just the tortoise he wanted. He wanted one that weighed 15 ounces exactly on his kitchen scales, no more and no less. When he'd got it, he put it on the kitchen table beside Alfie, and even he could hardly tell that one was bigger than the other. But it was bigger. It was bigger by two ounces. That was tortoise number two. Mr Hoppy took tortoise number two out onto the balcony and gripped it in the claws of his tortoise catcher. Then he lowered it onto Mrs Silver's balcony, right beside a nice fresh lettuce. Tortoise number two had never eaten tender juicy lettuce leaves before. It had only had thick old cabbage leaves. It lowered the lettuce and started chomping away at it with great gusto. There followed a rather nervous two hours wait for Mrs Silver to return from work. Would she see any difference between the new tortoise and Alfie? It was going to be a tense moment.
welcome to her balcony spoke Mrs Silver. Alfie, my darling, she cried out. Mummy's back. Have you missed me? Mr Hoppy, pinning over his railings, but well hidden between two huge potted plants, held his breath. The new tortoise was still chomping away at the lettuce. My, my, Alfie, you do seem hungry today, Mrs Silver was saying. It must be Mr Hoppy's magic words. I've been whispering to you. Mr Hoppy watched as Mrs Silver picked the tortoise up and stroked his shell. Then she fished Mr Hoppy's piece of paper out of her pocket and holding the tortoise very close to her face, she whispered, reading from the paper. Essio trot, Essio trot, teg regib, regib, emog no, Essio trot, wog poo, fub, po, touche, poo, gnerps, poo, warp, poo, lose, poo, erog, elzog, efoots, plug. Tup no ta, SEO trot, tup no ta, teg no teg no L blog boof. Mr Hoppy popped his head out of the foliage and called out, Good evening, Mrs Silver. How is Alfie tonight? Oh, he's lovely, Mrs Silver said, looking up and beaming. And he's developing such an appetite. I've never seen him eat like this before. It must be those magic words. You never know, Mr Hoppy said darkly. You never know. Mr Hoppy waited seven whole days before he made his next move. On the afternoon of the seventh day, when Mrs Silver was at work, he lifted tortoise number two from the balcony below and brought it into his living room. Number two had weighed exactly 15 ounces. He must now find one that weighed exactly 17 ounces, two ounces more. From his enormous collection, he easily found a 17 ounce tortoise. Once again, he made sure the shells matched in colour. Then he lowered tortoise number three onto Mrs Silver's balcony. As you will have guessed by now, Mr Hoppy's secret was a very simple one. If a creature grows slowly enough, I mean very, very slowly indeed, then you'll never notice that it has grown at all, especially if you see it every day. It's the same with children. They are actually growing taller every week, but their mothers never notice it until they grow out of their clothes. Slowly does it, Mr Hoppy told himself. Don't hurry it. So this is how things went over the next eight weeks. In the beginning, Alfie weighed 13 ounces. End of first week, tortoise number two weighed 15 ounces. End of second week, tortoise number three weighed 17 ounces. End of third week, tortoise number four weighed 19 ounces. End of fourth week, Tortoise number five, weight, 21 ounces. End of fifth week, tortoise number six, weight, 23 ounces. End of sixth week, tortoise number seven, weight, 25 ounces. End of seventh week, tortoise number eight, weight, 27 ounces. Alfie's weight was 13 ounces. Tortoise number eight was 27 ounces. Very slowly, over seven weeks, Mrs Silver's pet had more than doubled in size and the good lady hadn't noticed a thing. Even to Mr Hoppy's pe Mr Hoppy peering down over his railing, tortoise number eight looked pretty big. It was Amazing that Mrs Silver had hardly noticed anything at all during the great operation. Only once had she looked up and said, You know, Mr Hoppy, I do believe he's getting a bit bigger. What do you think? I can't see a lot of difference myself, Mr Hoppy had answered casually.
but now perhaps it was time to call a halt. And that evening, Mr Hoppy was just about to go out and suggest to Mrs Silver that she ought to weigh Alfie when a startled cry from the balcony below brought him outside fast. Look! Mrs Silver was shouting. Alfie's too big to get through the door of his little house. He must have grown enormously. Weigh him, Mr Hoppy ordered. Take him in and weigh him quick. Mrs Silver did just that and in half a minute she was back holding the tortoise in both hands and waving it above her head and shouting, Guess what, Mr Hoppy? Guess what? He weighs 27 ounces. He's twice as big as he was before. Oh, you darling, she cried, stroking the tortoise. Oh, you great big wonderful boy. Just look what clever Mr Hoppy has done for you. Mr Hoppy suddenly felt very brave. Mrs Silver, do you think I could pop down to your balcony and hold Alfie myself? Why, of course you can, Mrs Silver cried. Come down at once. Mr Hoppy rushed down the stairs and Mrs Silver opened the door to him. Together they went out onto the balcony. Just look at him, Mrs Silver said proudly. Isn't he grand? He's a big a big, good-sized tortoise now, Mr Hoppy said. And you did it, Mrs Silver cried. You're a miracle man, you are indeed. But what am I going to do about his house, Mrs Silver said. He must have a house to go into at night, but now he can't get through the door. They were standing on the balcony looking at the tortoise, who was trying to push his way into the house. But he was too big. I shall have to enlarge the door, Mrs Silver said. Don't do that, Mr Hobby said. You mustn't go chopping up such a pretty little house. After all, he only needs to be just a tiny bit smaller and he could get in as easily. How can he possibly get smaller? Mrs Silver asked. That's simple, Mr Hoppy said. Change the magic words. Instead of telling him to get bigger and bigger, tell him to get a bit smaller. Ah, but in tortoise language, of course. Will that work? Of course it'll work. Tell me exactly what I have to say, Mr Hoppy. Mr Hoppy got out a piece of paper and a pencil and wrote. SEO trot, SEO trot, take a tip. Relasm. A tib relasm. That'll do it, Mrs. Silver, he said, handing her the paper. I don't mind trying it, Mrs. Silver said. But look here, I wouldn't want him to get itchy small all over again, Mr. Hoppy. He won't, dear lady, he won't, Mr. Hoppy said. Say it only tonight and tomorrow morning. And then see what happens. We might be lucky. If it works, Mrs Silver said, touching him softly on the arm, then you are the cleverest man alive. The next afternoon, as Mrs Silver had gone to work, Mr Hoppy lifted the tortoise up from her balcony and carried it inside. All he had to do now was to find one that was a shade smaller so that it would just go through the door of the little house. He chose one and lowered it down with his tortoise catcher. Then, still gripping the tortoise, he tested it to see if it would go through the door. It wouldn't. He chose another. Again, he tested it. This one went through nicely. Good! He placed the tortoise in the middle of the balcony beside a nice piece of lettuce and went inside to wait Mrs Silver's homecoming. That evening, Mr Hoppy was watering his plants on the balcony when suddenly he heard Mrs Silver shout from below, shrill with excitement. Mr Hoppy, Mr Hoppy, where are you? She was shouting. 
Just look at this! Mr Hoppy popped his head over the railings and said, What's up? Oh, Mr Hoppy, it's worked! She was crying. Your magic words have worked again on Alfie. He can now get through the door of his little house. It's a miracle! Can I come down and look? Mr Hoppy shouted. Come down at once, my dear man! Mrs Silver answered. Come down and see the wonders you have worked upon my darling Alfie! Mr Hoppy turned and ran from the balcony into the living room, jumping on tiptoe like a ballet dancer between the sea of tortoises that covered the floor. He flung open his front door and flew down the stairs two at a time with the love songs of a thousand cupids ringing in his ears. This is it, he whispered to himself under his breath. The greatest moment of my life is coming up now. I mustn't fish it. I mustn't bosh it. I must keep very calm. When he was three quarters way down the stairs, he caught sight of Mrs Silver already standing at the open door, waiting to welcome him with a huge smile on her face. She flung her arms around him and cried out, You really are the most wonderful man I've ever met. You can do anything. Come in at once and let me make you a cup of tea. That's the very least I deserve, you deserve. Seated in a comfortable armchair in Mrs Silver's parlour, sipping his tea, Mr Hoppy was all of a twitter. He looked at the lovely lady sitting opposite him, and smiled at her. She smiled right back at him. That smile of hers was so warm and friendly. Suddenly gave him the courage he needed and he said, Mrs Silver, please will you marry me? Why, Mr Hoppy, she cried. I didn't think you'd ever get round to asking me. Of course I'll marry you. Mr Hoppy got rid of his teacup and the two of them stood up and embraced warmly in the middle of the room. It's all due to Alfie, Mrs Silver said slightly breathless. Good old Alfie, Mr Hoppy said. We'll keep him forever. The, uh, the next afternoon, Mr Hoppy took all his other tortoises back to the pet shop and said they could have them for nothing. Then he cleared up his living room leaving not a leaf of cabbage nor a trace of tortoise. A few weeks later, Mrs Silver became Mrs Hoppy and the two of them lived happily ever after. P.S you're wondering what happened to Alfie. The first of them all, well, he was bought a week later from one of the pet shops by a small girl called Roberto Squib, and he settled down in Roberta's garden. Every day she fed him lettuce and tomato slices and crispy celery, and in the winter he hibernated in a box of dried leaves in the tool shed. That was a long time ago. Roberta has grown up and is now married and has two children of her own. She lives in another house, but Alfie is still with her, still the much-loved family pet. And Roberto reckons that by now he must be about 30 years old. He has taken him all that time to go to twice the size he was when Mrs Silver had him, but he made it to the end. <laughs>